World Fishing Day, brought to you by Fishing TV, in association with Fishbrain. In a moment, we're going to be talking to our studio guests about the plight of salmon. But first of all, let us watch a short film to get up to speed on this important subject. In the North Atlantic and the great rivers that pour into it, there is a legendary fish whose future is now on the brink, the Atlantic salmon. It travels thousands of miles from river to sea, facing great risks and then returning back again. There's something very special about the salmon. It's homing to its, its place of its birth. Once salmon leave the streams of their birth, they live a phantom, unknown life at sea. Magically, they reappear some years later, call back to the very river where they were born. Whole communities once flourished on this bounty from the sea, but now something mysterious and deadly is happening to them. We know that we send out a lot of smolts to sea each year, and they're just not coming back. This is my way of life. It's my family's way of life, and it's part of the fabric of Scotland. And you know, we want it to continue for many generations to come. Somewhere on the salmon's epic journey, these remarkable fish are now dying in huge numbers. There's a mystery of smolts and why they're not coming back. And it's very important to understand where this mortality is occurring. In the last 30 years, returning populations of wild Atlantic salmon have dropped by 70%. To save these salmon, first we must find out what is happening to them. For some, the problem is clear. Principally, the problem is that we have been killing too many fish for too long. Governments and scientists don't accept this. They don't recognize it. Others believe there's more to understand. The ocean's really a big unknown for salmon. We have these big picture ideas of what goes on, but we really don't know any of the details. I just implore anyone that can influence what's going on at sea to do so. Pick up that ball and run with it. With livelihoods at stake and a natural wonder in danger of vanishing, now scientific detectives race to solve the mystery. And for the first time ever, an international team heads out into the North Atlantic to find why the wild Atlantic salmon is lost at sea. Well, such a beautiful fish, the king of fish, and so endangered. We're going to be discussing the plight of the salmon and what can be done about it. So joining me now is uh, Guy Edwards from Salmon and Trout Conservation, Anne Woodcock from Fish Pal, Anne at the end there, and Deirdre Brennan in the middle, who directed that amazing film. You saw that documentary, Atlantic Salmon Lost at Sea. Deirdre also produced it. We just saw a clip of it there. Deirdre, let's start with you. I, I have watched the film. It it's, it's a masterpiece, it's, but it's a worrying masterpiece. Mm -hmm. What drove you to actually make it? I know you were eight years in the making. Um, well, I've been passionate about Atlantic salmon for a long time, and I, my grandparents had a farm in Ireland and at the, right on the mouth of the Shannon River, and we'd see the salmon coming in and the fishermen, so I was well aware of the long journey that they took. Um, but what drove me to make this film was uh, Dr. Ken Whalen came and met me in New York um, and asked me, told me about this amazing project. He had made films with Ireland's Eamon de Butler previously, and Eamon asked me to work on this with him. So Ken told me about this incredible investigation called Salsi Salmon at Sea that was being launched to go out in the North Atlantic to actually find what was going on. So basically, we, we have an idea of what's happening in our rivers, but we didn't know what was happening out in the feeding grounds where the salmon go to feed. Right. So these expeditions followed the salmon from, the, um, from their feeding grounds up to the, or from their rivers up to the uh, Arctic, to their feeding grounds. And along the way, after the three years, the overwhelming evidence seemed to be that it's changing ocean conditions. There's a lot of local factors that are affecting salmon, like predators and salmon farms and so forth. But the overall thing seemed to be, from their evidence, was changing ocean conditions. The ocean's getting warmer. Food salmon eat. The plankton is moving farther north. 
And so salmon from the southernmost rivers have to travel that much farther to find the food, and they're just, they found a lot of them were starving, and then they're more susceptible to predators as well. And salmon starving, that's a terrible thought, isn't it? Guy, what's your take on why the salmon is so endangered? I mean, from our, my perspective, uh, being a very keen salmon angler and sea trout fisherman as well, um, it really, we need to look at things that we can control. We can control the river environment a lot easier. Um, you know, we, we have situations with pollution, over sedimentation, obstructions to their migration. These are critical, and, you know, particularly if you look at things like uh, predation, if you've got obstructions to smolts trying to run down river, they'll naturally school up. Um, if they're stuck behind something they can't get past, it makes them very easy to fall prey to, uh, to predators there. But the bigger issues that we've so, got... So we're is, talking is that fish ladders and things like yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's making sure that when the smolt run, I mean, from your film we saw, mm -hmm. when they get going, they really want to run. They don't want to stop at all. So we want to make sure that they can get down the river very quickly out of the estuary and start beginning their feeding journey. And that's equally important for fish running back up. But I suppose crucially, from my perspective, is the water quality that these fish are living in, both as par as eggs. Um, and polluted water, while it may look good on the surface, is going to be damaging all of their feeding that they need to consume to grow up to the size that they can smoltify and run. Um, and also, you know, conditions for when the adult salmon are running back in as well. For, they have to wait a long time before they spawn, you know, in some cases eight months. And where is this pollution coming from? Is it farming? It's, look, it's very difficult. There's no silver bullet with, with salmon conservation, and, and this is where it's important to look at scientific evidence, which is what's so important for our, the organisation I work for. We have to do studies. We have to look at what the actual facts are, because then we campaign at government level to get legislation changed. To answer your question, it can come off of, um, absolutely, there are agricultural slurry incidences that we've seen in the past. It can come from um, industrial pollution. It can come from, actually, our sewerage works not being treated perfectly, the water that's getting returned into the river. And all of these things can have an effect on the balance um, of the ecosystem, which ultimately are indicator species of salmon, salmonid fish, salmon sea trout and brown trout. And from Fish Pal, you're talking to anglers every day from all over the world. Uh, and what, what are they saying about the salmon on the rivers? Are we really noticing a decline in numbers? Oh, yes, we really are noticing a decline on the numbers. And the, the one thing that, that anglers are actually saying is goosanders, cormorants, and the number of them on the rivers. And also as well as seals in the estuaries. Um, and anglers want answers of why these birds that, is, as Deidre has already said, is that they're having to move further up to their feeding grounds. Um, these birds are now actually staying the, in our waters a lot longer because they've got all the nutrients, they've got the fish there. and. What's happening is is that anglers are there saying when they're going fishing, that's what they're seeing. And uh, we really need to be doing something with that as well. We've had some questions in. We've had loads of questions in, actually. But this is a very hot topic. You're very, very worried about the poor old salmon. And, and Anne, let's stay with you. There's, here's a question. What role can anglers play? I mean, we're... 100% catch and release, will that do anything or is that just a drop in the ocean? Well, they, they are actually looking at 100% a, a going towards that on in, in England and Wales um, because of obviously the nets um, and, uh, and last year the nets actually uh, were actually had an increase in the number, these are the offshore nets, of actually not only salmon but also sea trout. Um, anglers are actually doing a great job out there um, and uh, we, we really should be celebrating what anglers are doing because last year in the England there was um, just over 8,000 salmon uh, caught by anglers and 79% of those fish were actually returned. So anglers are actually doing a great job but catch and release, more and more anglers are actually um, are releasing their fish um, because they understand the importance of that fish going on further up, going up to the river to actually spawn. But also as well as anglers are there saying about the smolts that are coming out, that the number of coming back down are not actually going out to sea because again of the gassanders and the cormorants. Yeah, I suppose they have to eat something, but it's a difficult problem, isn't it? De Deirdre, that film that we saw there eight years it took you to yes. make and you came up with some incredible statistics I mean uh, you know for every hundred juvenile salmon leaving the rivers 
only five return. Is, is that possible? Yes, well, and in the film we follow them from their, you know, the, their streams of their birth all the way down, up, out to the estuary, up and back again. And so that was the point of the film, was to find, see this gauntlet that they have to run, um, just in the struggle for survival. And so um, that's, what we thought, that's what the statistics are, and it's sadly. Guy, a question for you from Ian Gordon, and also this is a question that taxing Philip and Tony Black, brothers from the Tay, if you're watching, hope you are, guys, hope, hope you're enjoying the day. And, and, and they want to know um, the panel's view on predators. Um, would you support a move to have goosanders and cormorants placed on general license? I mean, Anne was talking about that earlier. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the, for me to answer that, the question is, is, is this. Um, I'd need to see more evidence because for us to make a move at government level, there has to be empirical evidence. It can't just be anecdotal as much as I might see a, gr a larger amount of cormorants on my own home stretch of the Avon that I fish for salmon. Um, the point is I need facts and figures and, and as an organisation we're talking about shooting campaign, these birds, about culling yeah, them, aren't exactly. We? Now look, we, we're a conservation charity. I can't sit here and go out for wholesale slaughter of things. I think, there are, I think there are cases where if you've got a mission critical river where you have so few salmon, your own gen genetic group of salmon are so low that it's on a teeter point, then there may be a case in that with the evidence around it that the, that the avian predators need to be controlled. But if the answer is that I think that they should be put on a general license like corvids and anything else, I have to say I can't see the evidence for it there. And, and if I do, show me the evidence, great. Well, you know, I'll, I'll look at that when I see it. And evidence? Um, they need well, evidence before we start shooting these birds? Well, it, it is actually illegal to shoot them. Um, you have to obtain a license. Can we just make that very, very yeah, clear yeah, here? General license, definitely <laughs> General not, <yeah>. license. <laughs> and it's actually the uh, fisheries, the landowners, they're the people that actually have to get the license. Um, at this present moment in time, it, it goes... The, the fact of uh, the sat and well, um, cormorants, goosanders, 150 years ago, Chatters mentioned in his book about predators, and he mentioned about gulls. So it is a, it is something that's just slowly. It's, and, and as we say, the birds also have to eat as well. But yes. we don't we don't want to finish on a depressing note. No. We want to know that there is some light at the end of the tunnel. I know fishermen are very concerned mm. about this. We've mm. had so many calls and mm. tweets and whatever about the plight of the salmon. Guy, what, what hope is there? What, what can you say? I, I've got to say I'm hugely, hugely buoyant and optimistic about the future of salmon in the United Kingdom. But that is, there is a big but that comes alongside that. The status quo at the moment is not acceptable. We have to improve their habitat. Um, we have to do the research to understand how we need to improve it. And we need to campaign and get those, and get those changes made so it'll happen. You know, we've done a lot so far. I agree with Anne. Anglers now are much more conservation-minded, and I applaud them all for that. I catch and release everything myself, and I, I absolutely think it's brilliant. And we are, you know, eyes and ears on the riverbank and champions of these species as well. So uh, as long as the changes get made, I think there's a great future for salmon, and I, and I hope my grandchildren one day are out there catching them. Deirdre, can you be as positive? I mean, you have been out in the international yeah. scene. I mean, Guy, you're talking, uh, you know, from the British yeah, scene. For sure, for what sure. about well, the feeding Well, first of all, I'd say they've, they've survived. Atlantic salmon have survived for millions of years. They've adapted. They've gone through. They've seen ice ages and survived and adapted. So the species can adapt and they can change. We just have to give them the space to do it. So I think uh, these migra having migration corridors, unobstructed passage from the remotest spawning bed all the way up to the feeding grounds would be the way to we, to help the species. Industrial fishing is one thing we hadn't touched on. I mean, is that a huge problem in the feeding grounds? Are there great boats hoovering them all up? Well, we've uh, when I was on the Celtic Explorer, there were the fishing trawlers were right in the way of the migration path. So one thought would be, because they know now when they're migrating, the timing for those trawlers to stand down for that period of time to let them pass through, because they are getting caught up with mackerel and herring. But you are positive. You're hopeful as well. I am. That's very good. And Anne? 
Well, I would just like to go back to the anglers. Anglers are the ears, ears and eyes of the river. And, uh, and just to give you an example, um, last year, 35,000 people were introduced to fishing. Now, That's we brilliant. need more anglers going out fishing because they're the ones that actually see what's happening there. They're the ones that are actually catching the fish. They're actually the ones that are actually seeing the fish come into the rivers. There is fish coming into the rivers. At the moment, we're actually seeing more sea trout coming into our rivers. So it's actually, it's, there is, there is a, a, a major problem, um, but also as well as that we do need those anglers. Everybody needs to go out fishing <laughs> and enjoy the sport that we all love so much. Anyone would think you worked in the fishing <laughs> industry, Anne. <laughs> Anne Woodcock, thank you very, very much for coming in. Deirdre Brennan, we're very grateful. Brilliant film. If you haven't seen it, do watch it. It's a fabulous film. It really is. Atlantic Salmon Lost at Sea. And Guy Edwards from uh, Salmon and Trout Conservation. We're grateful for your views on this. And we're all very positive, which is lovely, because we don't want to end on a negative note. We don't want to see the end of the salmon, certainly not. World Fishing Day, brought to you by Fishing TV, in association with Fishbrain.